I'm Brian. I've uh, been to Buckskate Gulch two times in the last two weeks and uh, got some lessons learned about trip planning that I thought I'd pass on. I got to say, it was one of the most incredible trips, day hikes I've ever done. The place is just uh, spectacular. Uh, my friend Manny and I went there uh, on a backpacking trip. We were going to overnight, and uh, unfortunately, I hurt my back on the trail, and you know, we only saw a little bit of it. This is a photo I took of Manny. Uh, we dropped our packs for a while and just took some photos and it's just breathtaking uh, but i learned a couple lessons and um, so you know lessons were first uh, when to go um, we went in may and uh, may is actually the best time to go for a couple of reasons one it gets really hot uh, into the summer and two if you get too far into the summer, it becomes monsoon season. And uh, the last thing you want to do is be in a slot canyon when uh, there's a thunderstorm. Uh, a couple of things that I couldn't get clear when I was doing my research and planning was uh, how deep are the puddles? Are these a big deal? And there's this scrambling section that people were talking about. And I was so kind of uh, perplexed about the scrambling session that I bought a, uh, I brought a 30 meter climbing rope. It's like an Alpine coil in case, you know, we had to, you know, like protect our descent or something like that. And so here's, uh, there's a picture of my daughter going through one of the puddles. Uh, the puddles were pretty low by the time we got to them. There was about 18 pools just like this. Um, the water's cold, but you dry off pretty fast. And the scrambling section is really kind of a non-issue. Uh, that's my son-in-law on the right, kind of scrambling down a little hole there. Um, if you've got a heavy pack on, then, you know, there might be, you might need somebody to spot you. There were some backpackers that came through and I spotted them, but, you know, as, you don't need any gear or you need, you really don't need to be worried about the scrambling. Um, so I, I think it's, it's kind of overrated. Somebody put up a rope. And the last thing I think anybody needs to do is use that rope. So there's your intel for the scrambling section. Uh, we stayed at a place called White House Campground at the end of the trail. So we took two cars so we could shuttle uh, because, you know, the trail's like 23 miles one way. Uh, this is White House Campground. It's five bucks a night. There's not very many places to stay. So just keep that in mind. And there's no shade. So, you know, you're not going to stay there for days. You're going to stay there for like one day. Uh, while we were there, we actually scouted the trail as well. And uh, I thought that was helpful because when we came off the trail at the next night, you know, it was, uh, it was pretty dark. And, you know, once you get out of the slot and you're in an open desert, then it's, it, it was helpful to kind of know where we were uh, without having to depend on GPS at night in the desert. Uh, give me an overview of the trail. White House Campgrounds at the end. Uh, and it kind of goes straight down to the confluence of the Priya River, which is that little, little dot in the lower right-hand corner. And then there's two ways to get on the trail, uh, Wire Pass and Buckskin Gulch. We did Buckskin Gulch because I wanted to take the longest way. But in retrospect, uh, I'm going to do Wire Pass because we've done Wire Pass before. And I thought Wire Pass uh, shaves something like three miles off the trail. And it's just more scenic. So... You know, 23 miles is a long day. And, uh, you know, if you can get 20 miles and still see all the great scenery, then why not do 20 miles? So that was kind of the thinking there. Uh, I would highly recommend doing Wire Pass and, and not Buskin Gold's Trail. A couple things to bring. Uh, bring four liters of water, no less. Lunch and snacks, hat, sunscreen. I had some neoprene socks because I thought the water was really going to be cold. But if you're going with the weather is warm, you probably probably just use your regular socks and we didn't even change our shoes or socks we just kind of trudge through wag bags there is no place to relieve yourself <laughs> so bring a wag bag headlamps gps uh rattlesnakes are a thing i saw a rattlesnake there the last thing you want to happen is to get bit by a rattlesnake and there's no you can't call for help on a gps or radio there's no uh there's no view of the sky and so anybody that gets hurt like that, you're going to have to walk out and that could be a bad day. Uh, GPS is good to have, but it's only going to work for the last five miles. And so for us, it was just kind of that, you know, hey, we're almost off the trail. We one of our members uh, drinks a five hour energy. 
uh, when she was kind of maxed out and it didn't settle with her. And so by the time we got to the Pre River, she was vomiting and just feeling horrible. So uh, she was in a, going really slow and it, it was useful to be able to say, hey, we've only got three more miles to go and all that. If you're traveling with a group, make sure you stick together toward nightfall. Uh, our group split up at nightfall. I should have been more attentive to, you know, keeping everybody together as nightfall grew closer. The last thing you want is people in your group wandering off by themselves at night. Um, but there's not a whole lot of places to get lost uh, in the canyon itself. It's not until you exit the canyon that you actually kind of have to figure out where the campground is. And it's uh, as long as you know you follow the river drainage, it's 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 not too hard. But uh, it's better not to, not to go out at nightfall. Anyways, I hope these things are helpful to you. It's uh, like I said before, this is one of the my favorite day hikes of all time. You know, if you do a, a day hike on Mount Whitney, you know it's it's also 22, 23 miles. But the fitness requirement to do something like my Mount Whitney is pretty significant. The average person is not going to be able to do that. But the average person can walk 20 miles. I mean, maybe they're going to suffer a little bit, but gosh, it's so worth it. I hope you do Buckskin Gulch, uh, and I hope this is helpful for you. I'm Brian. Happy trails.